Hi, welcome to Costi Beauty Institute. I'm Colleen Costi, the founder and director, and I wanna welcome you to the eyelash extension training online. I wanna go through the kit with you. You should be having your kit arrive soon. And so let's take a little bit of time to go through it. Um, I call it the um, put on your glass slippers Cinderella mini kit because for a very low cost, we're going to help you to be able to start this fabulous business in the beautiful world of eyelashes. So here we go. So first we have your fan dryer. Uh, you'll wanna charge that up and it has a USB charger and it's a blower to blow away any of the fumes or tears. It's really nice. It's a, one that has a mirror in it, so it kind of flips up. So I'll show you that a little bit closer up in a minute. And then we have our eyelashes for practicing. We have five pairs of eyelashes and we have the training head, the practice mannequin. So what you're going to do is uh, just pull off one pair um, and put them on after we put on the eye pads um, so that then it'll be protected from the glue. So these are what you're gonna be doing your practicing on. And then we have our beautiful new um, Cinderella bags for your eyelash kit. So I'm gonna open it up now and we'll go through what you should do to set up and get started. So in setting up our workstation, we should always have hand sanitizer by us at all times. So anytime we reach away from the client, we're going to sanitize our hands and disinfect them. Even if we just grab our coffee or our water or any other products, sanitize your hands before touching the client's face if you go off or you get up or if you take a sale or a call. So sanitize before. We're gonna have her wear a mask, of course, and you should be wearing a mask. So please remember those health and safety guidelines. It's very, very important to respect people's safety and take into consideration the seriousness of um, having them protected and yourself. All right. So we've opened up our kit. And first of all, you have your three second classic um, adhesion glue, and it has in it a little pin to keep the nozzle clean. So when we use the glue, we keep that in it until we cap it when we're all finished with the client. It's got a dehumidifying little package and a little glue um, plate, like a little glue sticker just as a sample, we have more in there. Then we have our mascara spoolies. You'll need to have one of those out for each client and then I give them to them when I take when I'm all finished. So we're gonna put that in our holder. You have your micro swabs. So we're going to use um, two micro swabs per client. So we're going to take these out. These are disposable. We throw them out afterwards. And then we have our lash primer. We're gonna prime their lashes first. We have our gel glue remover if you need to remove lashes. We have our lashing tape to cover the bottom eyelashes or to fix their um, lid if their lashes are getting squashed in. We have a headband, a disposable. You can get more of those, but these are very nice because then you have a place to rest your, your wrist, your hand on. Just open this up to show you, see? Okay. And then we have our isolating tweezer and our lash applicating tweezer. Have our jar of tweezer cleaner. It's uh, to remove the glue. It's pure acetone with a little cotton in the mid bottom. I'll show you how to use that. We have glue rings. We have mixed trays of our silk custom lashes here from KBI Lush Lash. And um, these are beautiful, soft, silky, fluffy. And then we have our silicone lash mat to put our lashes on and then you have some of the hydro gel five of the hydro gel eye patches there's a pair in each package 
you have more of the glue stickers. And then we have our lash design stickers. They have the mapping and we'll map out the different styles that we're going to put on and practice with. And on the mannequin head, you don't need to use the gel pads. Just save those for when you do your live models and use the stickers for now. All right. So now we're gonna take your mannequin and we're gonna put it down um, on a bed or a table or desk in front of you while you're learning and practicing with a trainer head. Um, I'm going to just use mine here because I don't wanna get it uh, dirty. So I'm gonna put her, this is one of my makeup skins because I teach airbrushing. And so she's got a little bit of airbrush color on her and she's a darker skinned model. Then of course our workstation has already been sanitized with a hospital grade disinfecting liquid. Not alcohol, alcohol is just a skin antiseptic. It does not kill viruses and germs and is not safe for disinfecting your, your tools or anything like that. So barbicide with anti-rust is sufficient. You, it's a concentrate and watch the video just on the disinfecting tools. Or 10% bleach with 90% distilled water can also be used <clears throat> um, for 20 minutes to sanitize your tools, your tweezers, always in between each client. So I show you in the video the blue barbicide. So make sure that you've done that. When you take them out, you should wrap them in a sterilized towel or hand cloth or get these disinfecting pouches because they're fabulous. You can seal them up. So once you sterilize your tools, then you can put them in here and you can open them up before you do work on your client and she knows that they're totally sanitized already. Another little trick that I do is I have a memory foam mat, a bath mat or something like that, or a rug, if you're on hardwood especially, right underneath me. So if I drop my tweezers, they're not going to land into the floor like a dart. All it takes is dropping them or bumping them once, will, which will bend the tip and then they will not grab very well. So be very, very careful with these. You need to be very, um, cautious that you don't drop them or bend them or use them to open up anything else. Just use them for lashing. Now, before you start working and practicing, I mentioned about the electric blower. It does come with a USB charger. You just need to put it into a charge box and plug that in so that it has a little bit more of a charge and won't die on you when you need it. It does have a bit of a charge. And let me show you how it works because it's kind of fancy here. Um, so let's see if I can open it with my nails. Now, like I said, don't use those tweezers because those are very fragile. So let's see if I can open up the mirror. Oh no, I can't. I'm gonna have to use my nail. Okay, there we go. So this pops open a mirror. Be careful when you tear off the little protective covering uh, because it does have two mirrors, which is perfect for being able to check that your eyelashes on each eye from down here is even. Okay, so it's a perfect little fan, fan as well. So once you've charged it, there is a on and off button. Okay, so make sure that it's, turn it totally off when you're all done. Turn it on when you're working. And then this silver part here is the fan. And just hold it at about four inches away and that will blow away any tears if their eyes start to water from the brightness or from the fumes of the glue, although my glue is totally low fume, hardly any at all. But when they open their eyes, when they're all done, you'll want to have the client holding on to that. And this is my pillow station here with the shelf. And it's really handy because it does have a little pocket to put your little fan in there. Okay, and your tweezers even. So then you don't have to worry about dropping them. So once you're working on the client, you've already sanitized them. You've had them wrapped up and clean and not contaminated and loose. And But you can store them here so that you don't knock them off when you're working on somebody. All right, let's talk about tweezers now. 
<clears throat> and how we're going to start. I have a lot collection of tweezers, so I'm using to um, remove the lash rows and that, not to apply lashes, a pair of my tweezers that aren't really that great. So these are ones that you can see maybe if you can see close enough. I've bent them and dropped them a little bit. It's a little bit of a loose um, fit there. So I'm gonna use those instead of my good ones for lashing. So get yourself like eyebrow tweezers maybe, or extra tweezers that you don't lash with so that you don't bend the tip. And let's open up these practice lashes. And I'm just gonna show you the little tricks to get them out if you've never done it before. Sometimes it's kind of hard. So first of all, we're going to take these Take one of these little lash uh, mapping stickers and we're going to peel off a pair and I don't recommend that you buy these afterwards that's why I just give you one sheet though because you don't want to put this stickiness on top of the client's skin we're just using them for the mannequin and when we put them on the mannequin we're going to cover up that lash line so that we won't get glue on them when we're practicing this one's i've already done could be up a little bit higher i think i've probably taken it off a few times in teaching so let's do that <clears throat> now if you notice these are not as asymmetrical which means they have the same numbers on both sides but let's pretend it's correct and this is the inner corner of section one then the next section is section two, three, four, and five. All right, so they're not numbered correctly. Only one eye will be correct, the right eye. So that's why I'm saying we don't need to buy these because they're not really correct. We're going to map them out anyways by drawing in the sections and then the lengths that we're going to do. So it's not a problem. So now we're gonna put on the practice lashes. So taking those older tweezers or eyebrow tweezers, or you can use your fingernails. It's just, I just did mine and I haven't designed them yet. So I don't want to put on too many dints on dings in them. It's a solar changing polish. All right. So, um, it's not gel polish, so it didn't cure totally. So real polish takes a little while to, to dry. All right. So we're going to put these lashes on that plastic on the little white mapping stickers. And then, let's make sure you can see, you can kind of lift them up and they usually stick just fine. There we go. All right, and then you would do the other one. I've already got one on there, so let's leave her. And then we're going to set up the rest. Before the client comes in, or when she comes in and arrives, you're going to have her do the consultation form and the consent release form. So it's all in one um, form there as an example. You can download them, print them, you can use them or rewrite them if you need to. Um, and then once you've sanitized your hands and she's ready to lay down. I usually have her put the headband on first because it's a little bit easier. Then she can pull her hair up behind it. But I like these because then I have a nice clean area to work on to put my hand and my supplies without it being on her bare skin. All right. And then we're going to take out your silicone. You have a clear or pink silicone lash mat. When you open it up, there's two pieces of paper. Keep those because those are really handy and they'll be very, very sticky and you just need to clean them after you're done with hot water and soap. You can spray them with alcohol and they'll get sticky again. So we're going to put our lash mat. I'm left-handed so I isolate with my left hand and I apply the lashes with my right hand. So I'm gonna put it on my right side so I can pick up my lashes easily. If you feel that you are uh, right-handed dominant and you wanna pick up your lashes with your left hand, then you put it on your left side. Now you have two types of, two trays of lashes. These are my classic um, silk, they're black matte, which means that they're very dark and natural looking and they look pretty, they don't look like plastic because it's a very organic, soft fiber. 
and these are mixed trays. So the thickness is the first number. Uh, 0 0.15 is the diameter, which read your manual along and you'll see all the different thicknesses. So 0.15 is what I use for classics. You could use 0.18, you could use 0.20 or 25, which is way too heavy for the lash. And 0.20 is even too heavy. It'll give you a very thick look and they'll have to have strong lashes. Then the next um, letter is the curl. So we have C curl in this tray. This one is D curl. And then we have an M. Normally there would be a number and the MM if they're all the same length, which I can show you here. These are all the same length. These are my rebuy trays. So you can restock yourself with all the same length, but these are mixed, the ones in your kit. So you have a good assortment of eight millimeters long, which is the shortest, more like for the inner corner, or nine millimeters, the inner corner too. There's two rows of 10, which would be a good, nice short length for a natural look, or 11, there's two rows of 11 millimeter, um, or, or three of them, and then two of 12, 12, 13, and 14. So, you know, you have a good mixture, each row of lashes of the 12 rows, how many do you think there is? There are 400 lashes in each row. So you have over 4,600 lashes in this box. So that means if you're doing 100 lashes per eye, um, which would be 200 lashes, so you will get over 20 people be able to do with one box of lashes. So the one thing is, is that you'll run out of the certain most common lengths. So you'll want to reorder and there's a coupon for you um, to reorder and get your order at a discount for being a KBI student and stock up on the most popular lengths, which I find are 12 millimeter, 13, and sometimes 14 is a nice long. There's 15, 16, and 17 as well, which are super long. But these are the ones that you're going to use a lot of, is 12, 13, and 14. I think I have some 16s here. Yeah, this is my row of 16. So I'm gonna show you how to lay these out. So you're just gonna use your um, rows that you have there and I'll show you how to pick them up so you can remove the plastic. My trays are really nice and easy to open. I didn't like struggling with them so um, I made them very nice, easy to get. Now I'm going to use that old tweezer or an eyelash tweezer, not my good ones, and try to pick from the bottom if you have all the same or I would suggest that we do our first one at like 12 or maybe we'll do like nine, 12 and 13 lengths so that then they're easier to um, practice with for you. And then we'll start doing the lash mapping for your assignments. All right, so see, you just need to get that little row lifted and you're gonna pull off the whole paper with the lashes. And we're going to place it on our silicone lash mat I like to use a lash ring. You'll see that in the one video, but that takes some coordination. It's more ad advanced once you have more experience. And then we'll take our next row, 13 millimeter, which is a nice long length. Gonna lift that up there. That one's a little bit easier because there's some more space. And you're going to put it above. I put them in order of my lengths, the shortest at the top or, or else the shortest at the bottom. Whichever I'm going to use the most of, I usually put where I can grab it easier at the top. <clears throat> and I would also take a little marker and just write on it the length, because I think the mixed trays might not have the lengths on them or the repeat ones. Okay. And then we'll take our shorter length. And place this one here. Okay. And then we're going to take off one of the glue stickers, or you have a glue ring, so I'll show you how to work the glue ring as well. But you could put that down below where your lashes are. 
And if you want to use the glue ring, then we can do that if you wish, but it just takes a little bit more experience to be able to wear it and hold on to everything at the same time. All right, so if you use the glue ring, just watch that you have for sure something over her forehead so that when you're reaching, it's not going to spill onto your client. So for today, until you get started, uh, practice and feel more comfortable, let's just use the glue pad here. Now, just to set up for your glue, you're gonna shake, shake, shake it for like a good two minutes so it's not watery at all, okay? It has been sitting there, fresh batch just came in. So you do have to really mix them up and make sure that they are um, going to work for you without any clear and black non-mixed solutions. And then take the pin out because we're gonna use that to keep it stopped and the glue out of the nozzle so that it doesn't dry for you and it doesn't harden with glue in the nozzle. Keep your glue stored straight up, not upside down in your case once you've opened it because it will harden faster that way. Keep it in a cool, uh, non-humid environment or the fridge door. It's not necessary to keep it in the fridge as long as your place is not hot. So I put the pin in just to make sure that the glue is gonna come out easily. And then I'll just take about a drop and try not to squeeze it too much so that you don't squeeze air back into it, but you do need to get the glue out. All right, so we're going to take out a nice pearl bead of the glue. Yeah, and then just wipe off the nozzle with the tissue. And then I'm going to put the cap, the pin, in the nozzle so that it pushes back down the glue. All right. And then when I'm all finished practicing or doing my client, then I will recap it, but not before that. The other thing that you'll want to have out at your station for practicing and doing your clients is our twe tweezer clean glue cleaner. So we're going to open that up. You'll need to refill it every so often with acetone, but it does have acetone and a ball of real cotton. And I put this down in my workstation where it's not going to tip over. And I keep that handy so that I can easily dip my tweezers in it and make sure that there's no glue on them. Because sometimes you might touch the glue or get too close with the lashes and you'll get glue on them and then you can't do anything. So you can quickly wipe it off and then just have a tissue at your table or paper towel or another towel and you'll wipe it. It dries instantly almost um, before you touch the client again. So in starting our client, we have um, already put on her iPad. All right, so that uh, if she had a lot of makeup on, we can use a foaming cleanser or non-oily makeup remover. Um, but if she doesn't come with makeup on, which is great, that's what I always ask them when they book. I already have them know what to do and what to expect. So I'm going to begin with priming. So I take two of my micro swabs and I dip them or pour the primer onto them, one each time. You only need one um, for each eye. And you're going to begin to swipe down. So I always put the iPad on right before I prime so that it doesn't get on their skin protect their skin from the primer because it is a little bit astringent and it does clean off the protein and any buildup of oils on their lashes. And if you see any glue or mascara coming off, then you know you need to do it again. So get another micro swab. And also make sure you can do the lash line around the lid so that there's no oils. And then I would proceed to do the other eye And I'm just going to hold on to them here aside in case I need to use them for glue remover or something with this client. And then I'm going to take my mascara spoolie brush and my fan and check their lashes for drying them and for how many layers they have. I'm gonna lift them up, take a look and just see the state of their lashes and make sure that they're nice and dry. 
before I start to begin. So we're all ready to begin. Um, I do highly suggest that you do those hand exercises and your deep breathing to strengthen your fine motor skill muscles and these ligaments that are in the metacarpal bones because if they aren't strengthened and you're not used to of the ambidextrous, um, having a good control of your hands and not shaking, the more you practice and are tense, the it might cause you to shake because it's like kind of looking, uh, working out at the gym. When you lift weights, you start with only five, 10 pounds, you don't start with 100 pounds. But the more you do work, the stronger your muscles will get. So do those exercises, there's a video for you to follow along. Do them five times a day for the first week and you will greatly improve your steadiness. So we deep breathe, we've done our exercises so that our hands are warmed up and have lots of blood flow and circulation so that you're not going to be shaking as you practice and you have more flexibility with your wrists so that you can angle your hand and work from every angle to get those lashes isolated properly. Um, now we've got the headband on her, which is disposable and protecting her and it's protecting, providing a resting pad for you, as well as the hydrogel patches on a natural person, live person is going to be a little bit of cushion as well. So we are going to rest our hands on her head. I will just zoom out so you can see what I mean. And then when I balance, I can move my wrist and I can angle her head if I need to. When you're practicing with the mannequin, you can roll up a washcloth or a hand towel to give her a little bit of support so that you can work easily. The first thing you're going to start to do is just simply practice without any uh, applying any lashes. We're going to do a row of the whole um, lashes there, isolating them. So let me zoom in so you can see what I mean. So take your dominant hand uh, for the lash applicating um, tweezer, okay, the curved one, or you can do it the other way. Actually, let me do it the other way. I like, I can do both. So some, and I find it's easy to isolate with the curve. So I come up and into it. So that's a good way. So then you're going to use your non-dominant hand to pick up the lash. So practice finding each lash and spreading all the rest away. So you can see, there I go. I got one lash in the center and I moved all the others away. Oh, two came out, which will happen, but you must isolate only one. So do this exercise for about 10 minutes to practice the angle of your hand and using the tweezers. You can see that I am balancing my hand on her forehead and I'm not pushing hard on the tweezers or on her head, but I am just using it as a little bit of a gentle support. And I am pulling those lashes far away so that one lash is in the middle is left and that's the lash I'm going to apply. Now that's got two lashes, so I need to go back over it. We're going to graft one eyelash extension onto only one of her own lashes. So you must apply that way, otherwise when the lash grows, if they're stuck to the neighboring lashes, they're going to pull on them and then it will cause pressure and uncomfortableness or it might cause the lash to break or pull off. So you must graft one to one. Even when you do advanced volume training, that's why it's so important that you isolate well in classic. This is your fundamental principle that you practice. So go all the way through. And get your hand. One eye will be easier than the other. This is my easier one than the le left one because the left one I have to turn my wrist and backhanded to do or else I have to turn her head a little bit more. So it's much harder for me to isolate on the left side than it is on the right eye. So do both and you're going to notice that. You might have to turn her head a little bit or prop it up with a pillow or a travel pillow or a, a towel 
or get one of these memory foam pillow shelves. I think they're fabulous. I love them. So isolating is the most important, the first number one most important technique you need to master. She has some bare spots here because <laughs> she's already had lashes on and removed. So people will have that. People will actually have layers, which I have some of my uh, videos with real live models. You'll be able to see how they have layers or they've uh, had lashes on or pulled them off and they have some tr um, traction alopecia, which is means that they've lost some lashes. So practice this for 10 minutes, then do your wrist and your finger flourishes fast and slow to keep your blood flowing. Deep breathe in, exhale out, because that's all going to be the trick to helping you to be able to do this steady. So we're going to map or draw this out. So that we have a plan in mind. So we're going to first of all about where her iris, the outside of the iris would be. So it's not quite the center line, but it's right at the outer part. So let's say right where the bulge of her eye is. Out. Oh, this is going to be our halfway point. And then from there, let's do another halfway. And then the inner corner. She's got a big inner corner here. Most people don't. So let's split that again. And then we've got the outer corner. And then we're going to split this in half. That's probably about perfect there. All right, so the inner corner, we're going to do nine. Then we're going to go to, uh, we're gonna go a little bit faster because these mannequin lashes have long lashes. 11 millimeters long then we're going to do 12 then we're going to do 13 and then 14 so i think i didn't put the um the shortest ones down so we need to pick up one of those rows so now you'll see these tweezers i like because they have a little notch and i just lay them on my finger and use these have a nice fine point for isolating and then this is the l-shaped or hooked tweezer all right so isolate pick up the lash dip in the glue and then we are going to attach it to about one millimeter away from that lash line I'm going to balance my finger on her cheek and just hold this lash until it adheres and doesn't fall over. There we go. And then we're going to leave a quarter of an inch. Always leave a space. Don't do right next to each other because they'll stick together. So isolate. We're still in the, the longest length, the 14 pick up and let the lashes separate there we go dip just so that you have let's see how much glue and then we're going to balance my finger on make sure that you're applying it downwards the base has to adhere to her lash root and then just help it to stand up a little bit there we go now we're going to leave another quarter of an inch. Let's do one more 14 here, right on that mapping line. Okay. 
This is what takes the steadiness and you must be able to see if you can't quite focus and see those lashes and where you're putting it, then you're gonna need to get a magnifying visor or reading glasses and have really nice bright um, overhead light like a circle ring lamp. Now we're gonna leave a quarter of an inch and we're gonna change the length to 13 millimeter, hold those lashes far away from each other. Oh, I don't think I have 13 there. Let's just check what rows I got. That was 50, oh, that was 16. And there we go. Now this, I had, had a super long length. There we go, so that's 13, 14. So just make sure that it stays and then leave a quarter of an inch. Uh, we're gonna do the last one of the 13 there. The silicone pad is so fabulous because it grabs your lashes and you can play with them and, you know, make them at the perfect angle. Oh, I have my fan on. There we go. Okay. Now we're gonna go to 12 millimeters. move those lashes away so you can see what you're doing this is where it takes some practice of your hand control and your wrists and my fan is blowing on me there we go just make the angle nice and straight flare And we've got a little bit of glue on the pad, so let's lift that lash. And then by the time we've done four or five lashes on a live model, you always want to lift them, come back and make sure, I would tell them, keep your eye closed, but I'm just going to check that we're not glued to underneath lashes or the iPad or the tape. All right, so always just kind of lift their lid so that you can see and know for sure that they're not glued and touched. There we go. So now we're lifted. Okay. And then let's drop our, uh, clean our glue off of the tweezer by just rubbing on the little bit of cotton, making sure that they stay nice and clean. I wouldn't do this over their head, but I just want you to see. Okay. And then we're going to leave a quarter of an inch gap and so that none of those lashes stick together because once you start getting them all filled up, you're going to find it um, trickier because they'll be already, they'll start to get so filled in. lost my one lash. There we go. Watch she doesn't flop over the lash. And then let's leave a gap. I would go to the shortest length, but her lashes on the mannequin are already long. So we can just use what we have out here. And this angle, you have to make the flare kind of going towards her nose a bit. Yeah. But not too much, not lying down. Now, inner corners are always the trickiest. If they're natural 
lash model like your live person when you go to practice on a live one I'll show you some tips on that but you have to make sure that their lashes are not um, tucked in and the lid is not covering them up so when you're doing inner and outer corners you can always come from underneath and let's see if we're gonna get that adhering yep because it was just a little bit heavy and gonna fall okay so once we'll check it and give it a few minutes to set and adhere and then we'll come back out to do this eye and actually it's not a bad technique to do all of those on one eye and then start on the left eye so that then you get the equal amount and I used to count them like every one two three oops we have one here four five six seven eight nine ten lashes I would do ten lashes here and I would draw on my little client chart a little check mark or a stroke so we do one that'd be ten two strokes is twenty three strokes is 30, four is 40, and then 50, I cross them. So I knew each group that I had crossed was 50 lashes. And your requirement for all of your submissions is, must be more than 80, 80 is the minimum amount. All right, so this is your technique. Keep on doing that and practicing, and then don't forget to lift once they've been on there for a minute or two and the glue has adhesed and you can then take your spoolie and comb through and make sure that they're all attached well i think this guy is kind of like going to fall off so we have to do another one there and that's how you begin so 80 i think the mannequin has about 75 to 80 lashes on it so every single lash should be lashed so none showing and when you take your photos it will be close enough that I can see that you didn't miss any lashes and you can go back and find that you maybe could do more you'll separate them and this will give you a good practice first set and then this will be uh, I'll show you how to submit this or there's already a video on that um, to submit your first eyelash mannequin model three mannequin models for sure um, or if you want to do um, then I think it's two more uh, or the third one could be a live model but I need to see those before you have permission to do a live model you can also book a live virtual class with me so that then I can help you and see you uh, you just need to have a phone um, tripod so that you I can see your work kind of like what I'm doing as well all right happy lashing